third graders. What's going on? It's Mr. Stanley. How are you? It is a wonderful day for math. So let's put on our math hoodies and let's get rocking and rolling. So we've got today we're going to take a look at some two digit addition story problems. And as you can see, I have my first addition story problem right here. So the first thing I like to do when I get a story problem is to actually read the problem and then like underline or circle some things that really help me figure out what the story problem wants me to do to solve the answer. So I'll read it. Malcolm collects special marbles. He had 34 marbles. For his birthday, Malcolm received 17 more special marbles. How many marbles does Malcolm have now? So um, I want to find out what, what this story problem is asking me. Um, I want to know what's going on. So I have this boy here. His name is Malcolm. So I could, you know, think of Malcolm and what he looks like in my head. I could even draw a picture if I wanted to. And um, I know that what he has right now is he's got 34 marbles. For his birthday, Malcolm received seven more, 17 more special marbles. Okay. How many marbles does Malcolm have now? So I like that word now. It kind of says like, okay, what am I ending up with? But this is probably the word that really stands out to me, and that is the word received. That means to get. And usually when we get, we're dealing with a sum. So here we're dealing with a sum of two numbers. So the first thing now that I know what to do is I'm trying to add these two numbers up. And like we learned in a previous session back in module two, we learned that when you put an equation down that sometimes we like to do a variable or a letter that might stand for something we don't know. So in this case, we know that Malcolm has 34 marbles and we're going to add to his total, he received 17 more. And I'm not really sure what that answer is yet, so I'm going to use M to represent, in this case, marbles, or my unknown. So there might be several different ways that you might want to think about how to solve this problem. Um, one of the ways that um, I've seen in my classroom this year is I've seen um, students um, do some stringing. And um, they've taken each the ones and the tens and strung them together like this. So um, on this side, we have 30 plus a 10. And then over here on the other side, we have a four plus a seven. So now we can start to string these together. A 30 plus a 10 is a 40. And then we're going to add these two together here, which equal 11. And that's gonna give me a total of 40. I'm sorry, that's not correct. <laughs> Let me erase that. <laughs> a total of 57 it's because I've added my 40 and my 10 and my zero and my one and I end up with 57. So that's one way to um, look at 34 plus 17, but I have seen some students do it some other ways as well. Um, another way that I've seen uh, this problem completed is I've seen it completed by using uh, base 10 blocks. So they uh, would take uh, this 30 right here, uh, the 30, and they would make three long strips equal, each one representing 10, plus one more strip from this part over here. So I've taken my two tens together, and then I'll do some dots. And I'll do one, two, three, four, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I could take this and say, all right, I know this is going to get me to um, 40, which is three tens plus one ten. And then I've got 11 over here. So I could take this and do 11. Or I can regroup this and say I've got 10 dots and move this 10 over here. And now I have 50 plus the one dot that's left over, which I took and moved over here. And now I've made it 51. So um, some students like to use the base 10 blocks. Um, there is a base 10 app available 
um, through our Math Learning Center, which is a wonderful app if you like to use the base 10 blocks. And another way that my students sometimes tend to uh, think of this problem is they like to think of it in terms of um, bits and pieces. So they could take um, very much like they did with um, the first problem with the stringing, they just like to take the tens. We have three tens. We have one ten, and that equals 40. Then we add 40 plus 40 plus 7, which gives me 47. And then I can count on 47 plus 4 more is going to be 51. So I've seen students that way do it that way, and that's okay to do. Um, Another way that my students like to do this or think of this problem is they like to think of it in terms of a number line. And um, the first thing they do is they draw their number line out and they start at 34 or 17, it doesn't matter. And then you can add your uh, tens and ones that way. So I'm gonna add a 10 first from the 17 and that's gonna get me to 44 and then I'm going to add my um, 7 that's left, but I'm not so sure I want to do the plus 7 right away. I think I'm going to try to get to a friendly number first. So I think what I'll do is I'll add 6 to get to my friendly number because I know 50 is really close to that number. So 44 plus 6, and then I add the rest, which is one more. And that gives me my answer 51. As you notice, all of these strategies are getting me all to the same answer. That's what I love about math. Because sometimes when we do math, it really doesn't matter how you get to that answer. It's really the beauty of your math brain and how you continually make mistakes and figure out how to do these things on your own. And there's one last way that I like to sh share with my students or, or maybe your parents have even showed it to you this way. This is how my third grade teacher taught me. Um, and she taught me to line up my tens and ones. So she took the 34 and the 17 and said, here you go, Eric, you can do it this way. So you can do a tens and ones, and you can add up all of your ones first to get to 11. Well, I have one left over from my 11 because I'm going to take that over to the 10, and I'm gonna make this one 10. So one 10 plus three tens plus one 10 has a total of five tens, or that gives me the answer of 51. So some of you may have learned it that way as well, um, but those are just some of the ways that I've seen students do these problems. So um, today what we're going to do is, um, as your teachers, we're trying to figure out how you did these. So in today's um, assignment, I have another story problem all for you. Um, I'll read it for you and maybe, maybe we can come up with um, an equation, and then you try to solve it and show your teacher how you did it. And then that way, when you meet together as a class, you can try to figure out what way works best for you. Remember, we're trying to get the correct answer, which is fine. We're not counting on by ones anymore all the way to 51. That's not going to work for us in third grade. So we need to come up with a strategy that's effective and efficient. Effective meaning I get the right answer, but efficient means I can do it and I don't have to use a lot of steps. It's not gonna take me a long, long time to do it. So that question for number two, which you're solving today, is Jonah loved to read. Yesterday he read for 36 pages and today he read 28. How many pages did Jonah read in all? There's that word that popped up to me again, and I love it so much. It's in all. And we're dealing with a boy named Jonah, and I have a picture of what a Jonah looks in my head. I had one in my class a few years ago. Then we have 36 pages that he read, and then he read 28. So I want to know these two numbers together in all. So I'm going to write my equation. 36 plus 28 is equal to P. I'll just use the P for pages. That's my unknown. So for today's assignment, try showing how you solve 38, 36 plus 28. And don't forget to turn in your assignment to your teacher today. Awesome work. Have a great day and grow those math minds.